Any questions on process transfer, mold transfer, machine independence? So the question is, if you're transferring from a hydraulic to an electric, um, will there be specific issues with that? Um, what you may run into is your clamping mechanism. If you're uh, a toggle clamp on your your hydraulic uh, or your uh, your uh, hydraulic clamp on your hydraulic machine, and you go to a toggle on your electric, you may experience difference in mold deflection. Once you start pressurizing that cavity, the mold is going to bend. The platen's going to bend. And in a toggle clamp, where you're your center, your your position of pushing the platen forward around the four corners versus a, a center hydraulic piston on that, um, you may have some issues associated with that. Um, and where the scientific approach applies to that is, I don't know if on this setup sheet if we'll have uh, clamp tonnage showed. Um, plastic pressure. This is again an excerpt of the overall process setup sheet, machine independent process setup sheet, but one of those values documented is clamp tonnage. What specific clamp tonnage you're using. Um, and you want to duplicate that when you go between those two machines. And then you're going to have to use the data from graphic pressure profiles like this to understand the influence of that potential change in mold deflection. Other than that, um, that's really the, the most likely thing that you would run into. Any other questions? Yes. Um, so the, the question is, or the comment is that uh, when you're making the mold transfer based on data, you have to rely on the uh, uh, accuracy of the data, correct? If you're using transducers as part of the data gathering, then it's you have transducer resolution that comes into play. Um, absolutely. I mean, it's like gauge R&R. You know, you have to have a good gauge R&R to be able to repeatably and effectively uh, make sure that the measurements you're taking are, are accurate as well. Um, so the, the calibration of the, the sensors is, as part of that transfer is critical. Um, and for our purposes of, of the, the machine independent setup sheet, we, we've already, we've already at this point said that that's a given. Our gauges are calibrated; they're traceable NIST. The the calibration is up to date, um, and a lot of that will be spelled out in the validation protocol. It's going to be in the IQ phase of the protocol to make sure that the software you're using is validated, that the sensors are validated. All of that comes into the IQ phase. There's a number of, of uh, areas that will be in the IQ phase. You have machine selection, you have mold design, part design, and then your uh, calibration of your data acquisition if you're using that. So they're all categories within that IQ. Any other questions? Another common problem associated with a uh, medical device um, is being able to verify whether or not your processes are running to a validated setup. Someone in a production management responsibility type position, operational management, um, you're, there's always uh, uh, concern or uh, a need to know on whether or not the 24 machines on your production floor are running, running to the designed process as that mold was, was as the process was developed, are you running to that validation standard? 
Um, there's a number of ways people address this. Sometimes that production manager takes a walk out across the production floor in the morning, wants to get a handle on whether or not the process was running to validated setup overnight. Um, he may, but this is kind of the picture you get when you take that walk. You may approach a machine, look at the setup sheet versus the setup on the controller. Uh, if you have the, the level of experience to do that, um, but it's not an efficient process. Um, you need to be able to look at data specific to the process, understand that whether or not the conditions, uh, the plastic conditions are being matched all the time. So we can go from looking at the machine to looking at the machine controller to looking at graphs like this. None of those are particularly easy to do. When you get to graph interpretation like this, there's a learning curve associated with what means what and what do I have to do. Obviously, this looks like a good match. This doesn't, but I don't really know what to do about it. Uh, and as a production management type of level, uh, the responsibility is not how to fix it, but just to identify when something's changed. So what we've done in our software is we've taken and tried to turn the data into information, into usable information. So these graphs that are being displayed, they're looking at the reference template that's saved in the software and telling you based on machines conditions and material viscosity conditions if you have a match to the reference template. So without having to understand graph interpretation, you have an at-a-glance view of whether or not that process is matching the reference profiles. And as this screen shows, we have one match and one that doesn't match. Um, these, these analog type gauges have been able to identify that. Now as a, a production manager, production supervisor, you can contact the appropriate people to say, there's an issue here, we need to figure out what went on. taking it beyond that point to an overall network view of the plant floor, um, the advanced system overview uh, that's, that's available as part of the EDART system, now you can look at your entire network of machines on the floor and in real time you have those similar analog gauges that are coming up on your screen by, in, by machine and can see whether or not you're running to the validated setup. We've got a couple machines here where we have identified variation where we've deviated from that reference curve. Something specific has changed and the software at this point will allow you to identify that specific variation and then you can go in and you can show history. So you have come in at 7 in the morning, made this tour, you've looked at the, the PC right on your desk, understand there was some issues and you want to know how long those issues have been going on. The, the, the system will track that variation for the last 24 hours and you can see if the problem's been occurring all night, if it's a random variation, that type of thing. And now I can focus on a specific machine, uh, one specific problem. Now I can go down to the detail. Um, but without ever having to go there, um, depending on the design of your, the, the personnel on your floor, um, it's a it's a step by step approach uh, to efficiently identify whether or not you're running to your your validated process.